Okay, so we just went over um, the functions of the autonomic nervous system, the two different branches, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Now let's go over their anatomy. Okay, so all autonomic nervous system circuits have the same general layout um, in terms of anatomy. Okay, so basically remember that we are sending a signal out from the central nervous system to our target. In an auto autonomic circuit, we have um, that, that consists of two neurons. We have one neuron synapsing onto a second neuron and bringing that signal to our target tissue, okay? That synapse occurs in this structure here called the autonomic ganglion. So the word ganglion means a collection of cell bodies of neurons. Okay, so this is where all the synapses are gathering together and they form like sort of this little lump, okay? Um, and the neuron that brings the signal into the autonomic ganglion is called the preganglionic neuron. The neuron that brings the signal out from the autonomic ganglion is called the postganglionic neuron, okay? One thing that I wanna mention about this is um, this diagram doesn't show this, but we actually usually in an autonomic cir circuit, we have divergence, which means that the preganglionic neuron will actually synapse onto multiple postganglionic neurons to kind of spread that signal to multiple targets, okay? Um, so this is the general layout of the autonomic circuit. Um, the details, of the sympathetic versus the parasympathetic circuits are going to differ from each other. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so this shows uh, a diagram of the anatomy of a sympathetic circuit. Okay, so um, in a sympathetic circuit, most of the preganglionic neurons are going to originate from this sort of central portion of the spinal cord, the thoracic and lumbar sections of the spinal cord. Don't worry about the names, okay? And the ganglia tend to be, so ganglia is plural of ganglion, okay? The ganglia tend to be close to the spinal cord, okay? And in the sympathetic nervous system, they actually form, many of the ganglia actually form a chain called the sympathetic chain, okay? Not all of them, as you can see, some of the ganglia lie outside of the sympathetic chain. Um, but that brings up this question. So think about if we have the ganglia close to the spinal cord, what does that say about the relative lengths of the preganglionic and the postganglionic axons? So think about that for a second. Okay, so it's not too hard to figure out, I hope. Um, that if the ganglia are close to the spinal cord, that means the preganglionic axon is going to be short, while the postganglionic axon is going to be long. Okay. All right, now let's take a look at the parasympathetic division and its anatomy. In the parasympathetic division, our preganglionic neurons generally originate in the top, like above the spinal cord actually, in the brain stem, which is a part of the brain, okay? And um, in the bottom, the very bottom part of the spinal cord, which is called the sacral spinal cord, okay? Looking at the locations of the ganglia, the ganglia tend to be close to the target organ rather than close to the spinal cord. Okay, so thinking about that, let's ask that same question. So what does that say about the lengths, the relative lengths of the preganglionic and the postganglionic axons? Think about that. Okay, so hopefully you figured out that the location of the ganglia means that the preganglionic axon is going to tend to be longer and the postganglionic axon is going to tend to be shorter. 